church and who call themselves serving the Lord and having faith in God simply because they think it will exempt them from the immunity and give them a certificate of immunity against the harsh experiences of life. There are a whole lot of people who believe that just because they call themselves serving the Lord, just because they come to church and serve in a ministry, that ain't nothing bad supposed to happen to them. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, faith in God is no guarantee that you won't see some dark days and have some stormy nights. Faith in God doesn't mean you won't get cancer. Faith in God doesn't mean your children won't go crazy. Faith in God don't mean you won't have to see the dark and nasty side of life sometime. Uh, faith in God doesn't mean you won't have to cry sometime. But faith in God is no guarantee that bad things won't happen to you. But faith in God is a guarantee that whatever you happens, God will see you through. See you through the bad times. See you through the down times. See you through the sickness. See you through the pain. See you through the storm. Uh, see, for Habakkuk, his survival was at stake. Uh, the fig tree won't blossom and ain't no herd in this stall. It doesn't get any worse than this. But Habakkuk said in this, and listen, I don't care if my circumstance is as bad as it can get. I just believe that God is greater than my circumstance. And my brothers and sisters, I don't care how bad things get for you. You've got to remember that God is greater than your circumstance. Uh, nothing has to be wrong with your faith. Uh, because light keeps slamming you up against the wall. You got to hang on to your faith anyhow because God is greater than your circumstance. You might be sick, but God is greater than your sickness. You might be lonely, but God is greater than your loneliness. You might be grief stricken, but God is greater than your grief. You might be unemployed, but God is greater than your unemployment. You might be hurt, but God is greater than your hurt. Life may have knocked you down, but God is greater than your down condition. If you're sick, he's still a healer. If you're lonely, he's still a companion. If you're grief-stricken, he's still a comforter. If you're unemployed, he's still Jehovah Jireh. If you're hurt, he's still a soother. If you're down, he's still a picker-upper. Whatever the circumstance, God is greater than your circumstance. Habakkuk said, hey, I, 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 don't know. I don't know why you're doing this to us. I, I don't even know why you put us in a situation like this. Uh, but I, I do know that you know what you're doing. And I'm just going to believe in you. And I'm going to wait on you. And I'm going to find me some praying ground somewhere. And I'm going to praise your name. And I'm going to wait on you and trust you and praise you while I wait. Uh, Habakkuk said, hey, look. I'm going to wait on you and trust in you because the just shall live by faith. And you got to remember that, my brothers and sisters, that the just shall live by faith. Uh, the just don't live by proof. Sometimes you can't prove it. You can't prove nothing. You don't know how you know what you know. Uh, you didn't read it in no book. You didn't learn it in no class. You just know that you know that you know that you know that you know. For the just shall live by faith. You got to wait on him. You got to trust in him. You got to put your hand in his hand. You got to believe that he'll make it turn out all right for the just shall live by faith. You know, when I was a boy, we used to sing some of them songs and, and we don't sing them no more, but we used to sing an old song uh, that said, when waves of affliction sweep over your soul and sunlight is hidden from view, whenever you're tempted to fret or complain just think of his goodness to you and that's what you got to do my brothers and sisters you got to stop sitting on the pity pot and counting your tears instead get on your knees and count your blessings and think of his goodness to you uh, think about how he woke you up every morning how he already made a way how he already put joy in your heart how he already did more for you than you ever thought you'd do for yourself just think of his goodness to you Ain't he good? Doesn't he make your way? Just think of his goodness to you. God is greater than your circumstance. But come here. See here in the second instance. The Habakkuk said he was going to praise him anyhow. Because he recognized that God could make the ends justify the means. 
Now, Habakkuk's problem with God here was the method and means that God was using to achieve his purposes. His problem was with God's methodology. See, God was about to use an ungodly people to, 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 to punish his own people. Uh, it doesn't appear here that the means justify the end. In other words, uh, in, in the field of ethics, there's always a classic debate as to whether it's always necessary for the means to justify the end. In other words, can you tell somebody a lie in order to help them see the truth? Well, Habakkuk was feeling like God was using unjust means. He was reasoning within himself. Now, it's okay for God to punish his people, but it's how he does it that calls him, makes him eligible to be called on the prophet. Uh, the means here don't appear to justify the ends. It's like, um, uh, will God use those people there in the Middle East to bring big bag of America down? Or it's like old Job's uh, wife asked, or Job asked, will not the judge of the universe do right? And you can say what you want to say, my brothers and sisters, but sometimes we have a problem with the methods that God uses to accomplish his purposes in my life. I dare say that um, when, you, when you pause and when you reflect and, and when you recognize and when you look at your own life, then you can't help but recognize that it was in the down and dirty times when life was at its worst that we got closer to God. Uh, for some reason, it seems like we take God more seriously when the bottom falls out. Uh, but uh, 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 when things are uh, going pretty good, uh, we too busy for God. Uh, but then when we go to the doctor for a checkup and, and the doctor say he sees a mass and recommends chemotherapy, uh, when the company start outsourcing and, and your job gets outsourcing, you still got all of them bills. Uh, when your best friend been talking about you behind your back, uh, then all of a sudden we want to get in a hurry and talk to God and he gonna tell me something and if we're not careful then our faith will get fickle and funny and we'll start blaming God for everything that's ever gone wrong in our life. Uh, Lord, you know, I, I try to serve you. I'm a deacon out there at that church. Why you let me get sick? Uh, Lord, I serve you. I, I pay my tithes every week. Why you let me lose my job? Old dope smoking Joe don't lose his job. He don't even come to church. And, 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 and he don't even get sick and catch a cold in the wintertime. Uh, Lord, why you let me get played by my girl like that when I help her raise them on nappy head kids? Uh, Lord, why you let this happen to me? Uh, you see, it is this, this, whatever this, this is in your life that causes us to have a faith problem. See, our faith in God says that God has our best interest at heart and God won't let any harm come our way. Uh, but then when we're passing through something, uh, when we don't understand what we're going through, we start blaming God as if God caused it. Well, listen, God doesn't cause it, but God will use it. But the good news is that he'll use it to make the end come out all right. Uh, God doesn't cause the sickness, but God will use the sickness just to remind you that he's still got healing in his touch. Uh, God doesn't cause the unemployment, but he'll use the unemployment to tell you you can depend on him and not checks. You know, checks are funny anyhow. Sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's enough and sometimes it ain't. But I'm trying to tell you that whatever your need, God will provide. He'll still make a way. I don't care what you're going through. In the end, it'll be all right. I don't want to have to climb up the rough side of the mountain. But if that's what it takes to get my soul to the hallelujah point, bring on the mountain. I don't want to have to walk no lonesome valley all by myself. But if that's what it takes to get closer to my God, bring on the valley. I don't care what you're going through. In the end, it'll be all right. Then come here and see in the final instance that Habakkuk said he would trust in God anyhow because he knew that God can blow your mind. Now as Habakkuk looked out on his circumstance, he didn't see no hope. He didn't see any possibility. He didn't see any hope anywhere. As far as he could see, doom and gloom was just around the corner and he didn't see how he was going to be able to avoid it. He didn't have anything in life to hang on to except his faith in God. But he had resigned himself to the fact that if he was going out of here, then at least he was going out of here hanging on to his faith in God. And sometimes you can say what you will, my brothers and sisters, but sometimes that's all you got. 
Uh, you tried everything else and ain't nothing worked for you. Uh, you invested what little bit you had and even lost that. Uh, you did the best you could and your best just wasn't good enough. You prayed about it and God don't seem like he's ever going to answer that prayer. You've got one of two choices. You can take Job's old crazy wife's advice and you can curse God and die. Or you can take the Habakkuk option and you can find yourself some praying ground somewhere and get over on your hands and knees and wait on the Lord and then just praise him while you wait. Uh, this is what Habakkuk did. And Habakkuk kept his faith in God in spite of his circumstance because he at least knew that God had the ability to blow your mind. Uh, so you think it's all over and you at your wits end and you ready to throw the towel in and you ready to put your hands up and just say to hell with this. And just when you resign yourself to the fact that it's all over, here comes God from way out there in left field somewhere and blindsides you with old crazy kind of blessing that you ain't never expected and just end up blowing your mind. Habakkuk didn't know how God was going to do it. And in fact, he wasn't sure God was going to do it. Uh, but he had had enough experience to know that God doesn't announce the end of his plans at the beginning of his plans. But that if you will wait on him and trust in him, then God does have a reputation for blowing people's minds. Uh, now, I'm going to look past you and pluck me a couple of witnesses out of the balcony of eternity. Uh, uh, come here, Sarah. Uh, girl, what you laughing about? Uh, well, God just told me I'm going to have a baby. Uh, well, what's up with that? I mean, women have babies every day. Uh, yeah, but I'm 90 years old. I'm way past childbearing age. I was finished with many paws before you was born. And now me and old Abe going to have a baby? Uh, shucks, that blows my mind. Uh, come here, Moses. Uh, tell us your story. Uh, well, you know the Egyptian army was in behind me. I had mountains on my left and on my right. I had the Red Sea all stretched out before me. And God just told me to stretch out my rod. And when I stretched it out, a four-lane, one-lane highway uh, came up out the water and we crossed over on dry ground and didn't get a spot of water on us nowhere. And that blows my mind. Uh, come here, Daniel. Uh, give us your testimony. Uh, well, you know, they put me in the lion's den, uh, and I just knew that I was lion lunch. Uh, but God did something to their nature and changed them from ferocious lions to little timid pussycats. And I laid down with them and played with them. Uh, they took their tails and fanned me, and I walked out and didn't get a scratch on me nowhere. And that blows my mind. Uh, come here, Jesus. Uh, you tell us what you got to say. Uh, well, you know, they took me that Friday afternoon and they nailed me to the cross. Uh, they laid me on the cold, cold ground. I saw the devil when he came up and kicked the body. Uh, got on his cell phone and called to death and said, get a hearse from hell and come pick up the body. Uh, death got on the phone and told Grave, guess who I got? Gray said, well, if you can get him here, I sure can keep him. I got every man since Adam locked up in here. I saw him when they laid him out that Friday evening. And the devil and death high-fived. Demons were dancing. The Gorgons were rejoicing. But somewhere between Saturday midnight and early Sunday morning, Jesus opened his eyes and said to the devil, give me the key. And he took the key and got up with all power in his hand. And that's all I want you to know tonight. Whatever you're going through, he's got the power. He's got the power to see you through. He's got the power to make your way. He's got the power to solve your problem. He's got the power to answer your issue. Whatever you got, hang on to Jesus. He's got the power to see you through. Now Habakkuk said, uh, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And literally translated, that means I will jump in the Lord. I will spin round in the God of my salvation. So I don't care how bad things are for you. Uh, 